The President of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, has said that the Donbass region in the east of the country has been completely destroyed, saying it was like hell. It comes as the leader of Ukraine's Azov Regiment said he'd received orders to cease defending the besieged steelworks in the devastated port city of Mariupol. Russia has intensified its bombardment in the Donbass, especially around the city of Severodonetsk. There have also been Russian advances elsewhere in Luhansk, with Russia's defence minister saying today that the liberation of the region is nearing completion. Jeremy Bowen has the latest. The Russians are shelling Severodonetsk as they try to encircle it. More than 100,000 people lived in the city before the invasion. Now it's one of Russia's biggest targets. This is Russia using the methods it perfected in Syria and Chechnya. Heavy bombardment to try to break the will of its opponents. Ukrainian rescue crews can still operate to reach civilians who need to get out. Day by day, family by family, Russia is grinding forward. It is a long way to safety, down roads out of Severodonetsk, that the Russians are shelling. They're trying to cut the city off from support, rescue and reinforcement. Children here were born into a war. Ukrainians have been fighting Russian-backed separatists in Donbass since 2014. In Moscow, Sergei Shoigu, the defense minister, held a made-for-TV briefing designed to back the Kremlin's message that Russia is winning. The minister said their advancing forces would soon take all of Luhansk, which is one half of Donbass, including Severodonetsk. Ukrainian combat engineers are trying to slow down the Russian advance, laying charges to blow this bridge on a strategic road. Three, two, one. President Zelensky started with his good news. The Ukrainian armed forces continue to make progress in liberating the Kharkiv region, but the occupiers are trying to further strengthen the pressure in the Donbass. It's hell, and that's not an overstatement. Bombardment of Severodonetsk is brutal and meaningless. Ukraine's defences in Donbass are creaking. They're still not breaking. Away from the front lines, life goes on in Ukrainian cities. In the end, the outcome of this war depends on Ukrainian resilience, on the amount of help its army gets from NATO, and President Putin's determination to fight on whatever the cost to Russia. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Dnipro. Ukraine's president today described the situation in the east of his country as hell. Vladimir Zelensky said the Donbass region was completely destroyed. But further north, they're succeeding in pushing Russian forces further out of Kharkiv. ICB News has travelled to the city and seen the new front line. The Russians, though, are still a very real threat. From there, our correspondent Dan Rivers sent this special eyewitness report. Around Kharkiv, the front lines are shifting. The Russians may have been forced out of Stary Saltiv. Right, right. okay. But that doesn't mean they're leaving it in peace. It's close. If you're on this road, you're being watched. Hidden among these trees, Russian eyes and Russian guns. Here, apartment blocks face snipers and artillery, the slightest sign of movement, and they open fire. You can just about glimpse this new frontier between the two armies, but it's wise to keep your head down. The Russians have been pushed back the other side of the Donets River, which is now the front line here. But while they've been forced out of the town of Stary Saltiv, they are shelling it on a daily basis. Outgoing or incoming? 
There's little respite between the salvos for those who remain. In the refuge below, the mental toll becomes clear. Nina has a pacemaker and the anxiety is crippling her. Does she think about leaving here? I have nowhere to go. There's a lot of shelling going on now and it sounds like it's right in the middle of town so we're not going to hang around and think we're going to get out now but uh, this is what the people here are living with day in day out. On the edge of town signs the Russians were caught off guard but while their abandoned camp suggests a Ukrainian victory the Russians have not been pushed back very far. A destroyed T-90M tank highlights Russian vulnerabilities. Even with its superior armour, it was no match for British-supplied weaponry, as seen from a Ukrainian drone. It's allowed Ukraine's own tanks to take up position, but the crew of this T-64 went one better than destroying their adversary. They defeated them while managing to salvage Russian hardware which they told me will be put back into service against their enemy. It was scary, but we did it. It was a spectacular victory. Elsewhere, Ukraine is redeploying and recapturing ground previously held by Russia. Northwest of Kharkiv, President Putin's forces have been pushed back inside their own border, but that doesn't mean they're out of the fight. Hello, how are you? The local commander of a village within sight of the frontier takes me to see how it's become the new front line. When our forces approach the border, the Russian attack us with aircraft and artillery. And so they are digging in within sight of their much bigger neighbor. Here, their means of holding them off is a machine gun made in the Second World War. Half a mile down the track from Russia, another reminder that Ukraine's pivotal role in the world's food supply has been upended. This cargo of grain is lost, but so might much of this year's harvest. It will be felt in hardship and potential famine far from these borders for years. The shifting front lines here aren't just Ukraine's concern. The consequences of this conflict are global. Dan Rivers, ITV News, Eastern Ukraine.